everyone and welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here then welcome my name is crystal and i am currently 24 weeks pregnant with baby number two child number three i have a two and a half year old son named brixton and a almost 16 year old bonus stepson named jeremiah today i want to talk a little bit about the things that we have been doing to prepare our toddler for a new baby so this will be his first time becoming a big brother and i know that that can be a bit of a struggle and a challenge and fully aware that no matter how much preparation we do we'll probably run into some emotions he doesn't know how to put words to some behaviors that are a little less pleasant as he's trying to get his feelings and thoughts out but we're trying to do the best that we can to prepare him ahead of time so first and foremost we are simply talking to him about the baby and about how our family is growing with him being a little, little bit of an older toddler like he's not a year he's not 18 months he has a good understanding of what's going on he understands that there's a baby in my belly he knows what babies are and interacts with them he's curious about them he's always been very curious about babies and very interested in them and very kind and loving toward the baby now he understands that there's one growing in my belly and we talked to him about how he was in my belly once we showed him pictures of when he was in my belly when he came out of my belly so like in the hospital things like that when he's smaller so he knows what a baby is and then a baby grows up to be a bigger person he recognizes baby pictures of himself so he understands all of that he knows he's gonna be a big brother he has a big brother so that helps him understand kind of what that means what it means to be a brother because he already has one so that's been helpful um, but yeah we just talked to him about it pretty much all the time <laughs> um, not like we harp on it but we just remind him he knows he comes up to my belly he'll say my baby where's my baby if I have a hoodie on he'll like open my jacket or you know lift my shirt where's my baby so he's very aware of the baby being in there in the process of talking to him about the baby we do remind him that of his place in the family we remind him that he's important and one thing that i say to him often when he's talking about the baby is like even though you won't be the baby of the family anymore because we will have a new baby you will always be my baby so just reminding him that that he's still my baby he's always going to be my baby and that this baby isn't replacing him it'll just be the youngest member of the family that will need some help and some support and a lot more care and attention we do talk about that so just talking to him about the things that might change as we get a baby into the family that's now the youngest and most vulnerable and needy uh, member of the family what that might look like and how we all can work together in that change which leads me to the third thing we're doing which is we are reading a lot of books to help him to understand what is happening so there's a few different books that we have that we read to him we don't force it we introduce new books whenever he has a new book where i may introduce it put it out so he can see it he typically does want to read that but beyond that we don't force it so we let him pull the books that he wants to read off the shelf he has read each one of these as he's gotten a new one he pretty much that's the book in rotation for bedtime for a bit and then he'll move on so the first one is this one here it's called nine months so it's nine months before a baby is born and this book we got probably when we first started trying to conceive so we've had this book for quite some time and we introduced it the day that we told the boys that we were um having another baby so I introduced it it basically walks through a, diff a family as they are going through this season of life it just walks through the process as the baby grows and then i think around week 15 is when it starts showing the actual Oh no, week 10 here, because it doesn't have every week, but has certain weeks. So week 10, it'll start to show the actual size of the baby. So I was able to start holding the book up to my belly so he could see how big the baby was. I actually did this 20 week one. Um, I did that one during my 20 week pregnancy update. It's very informative, talks about how mommy and daddy are gonna go away, that the baby's gonna come out. 
um, and then the sibling will meet the baby. So this is more about the process of what happens when a baby is born, like the physical changes and what's going on with that. The other two that we got are all about Brixton. The first one that he got, and he got this one for Easter, was Andre the Best Big Brother. And so we got this one to talk to him about it as well. It's called When Three Becomes Four. So these are both, which is, I love the fact that these are both um, about a brother, a big brother. This one doesn't specify if the baby's a boy or a girl. This one we got after we knew if we were having, uh, if it was gonna be a boy or a girl. It happens to be a girl, so it's perfect because it's a little girl, it's a big brother. So that works out really well. They do have other books, like this Andre the Best Big Brother. I feel like I've seen very similar ones about the best big sister but they are there are other books about being a big sister out there and i will link all of these books below as well as the other ones that i have seen about uh, becoming a big sister that i think would be a good resource but these both starts closer to the new baby being born um so andre the best big brother talk, starts the day the baby's coming home and when three becomes four starts when mom's belly is basically the size of a watermelon which means full-term baby ready to come ready to burst any moment and his emotions around like his mixed emotions around the new baby coming and what I really like about these is that the brothers are excited that they're gonna be a big brother but it also talks about the things that they might be experiencing that are those more negative completely normal but negative feelings that they might be experiencing and how they navigate those and what they can do as they introduce this baby into the family, how they can maybe help or play with the baby, be integrated with the baby, why mom and dad might be so busy all of a sudden. And it really works through that and it gives us the opportunity to ask Brixton if he's having some of those feelings. Like um, one of the things that was really cool in When Three Becomes Four, it says, I think I'm excited for baby sister to arrive, but I'm not too sure. And then there's this, a really cool picture of the different emotional feelings, like in an emoji style that he might be experiencing. And so Brixton might recognize, look, that one's sad, that one's, and we're like, yeah, well, how do you feel about your sister coming? And we get to talk to him about it and it might change depending on the night or the day. And so that just, they give us an opportunity to continue to introduce him to the fact that you might not be okay about this. You might not be feeling all excited about it and that's okay, let's talk about it. And I think that's helping him to start to feel, to open up to some of those things where he's a little unsure about how he feels about it, which I'm perfectly fine with. Like I don't feel like you need to shelter him and hide it from him and then the baby gets here and he has all these feelings he doesn't know what to do with he's probably still gonna have feelings he doesn't know what to do with but exposing him to the fact that like you're not alone this is a thing that happens and it's okay and we can talk about it and this is how these two boys worked through it because because to him these people in the books they're real so like this is how Andre worked through it or you know what so just helping him to figure that out for himself another thing that we're doing is allowing him to interact with the baby in my belly so of course he can't do much with the baby but he wants to see the baby he wants to lay with the baby he wants to hug the baby he wants his baby near him if he sometimes he just wants my shirt up because he wants his baby he wants to be close to his baby he wants to see his baby so he might poke my belly button or try to touch the baby he'll say i'm touching the baby by touching my belly button things like that and we think that's perfectly okay and we let him interact with my belly as much or as little as he would like to the next thing we're doing is we are talking to him about the future so things like sharing his room uh things about what might change around the house what might change in our routine or in our schedule we're just bringing those things up just so he's exposed to it so one day you know when the baby starts to sleep through the night we're not just suddenly rearranging his bedroom <laughs> to put the baby in his room just talking to him about it and say okay well the baby's gonna sleep in mommy and daddy's room for a while because we got to help the baby learn how to sleep and has to get a little bigger but when the baby's big enough and when the baby's sleeping through the night then she's gonna come and she's gonna share a room with you how do you feel about that and he's like he actually seems excited about that part so far we'll see um but just exposing him to that now like this is gonna happen it's not a question it's just 
telling him about it and asking him how he feels about it. Or if he's excited, are you excited to share your room with the baby? What are you excited about? So just things like that. We've also been keeping him very involved in the entire process of the pregnancy, like I showed you with the nine months book, just letting him know, hey, this is what's going on with the baby. Um, things like the gender reveal, showing him sonogram pictures, those kind of things so he can kind of start to connect more. He carried that one, the picture from our 12 week scan, our early one. He can't, we gave that to him when he was, when he found out that we were expecting to make it a little more tangible and real. And that was his baby. He needed a picture of his baby. He would stick it all over the house. He took it in the car. He took it everywhere. Now it's kind of laying on the floor somewhere <laughs> upstairs, but that was his picture of his baby. And it helped him, I think, to feel like a connection with the baby and to have something tangible just to say, okay, this, this really is happening. There really is a baby in there. The other thing that I'm doing, which might be a little more unique to a C-section situation, I, I don't really know because I have not had, nor will I have a natural birth, but I've been starting to gradually hang out with him more on our bed. <laughs> um, both on our bed and like seated in the living room, on the sofa, that kind of thing, because I'm not gonna be able to pick him up because I'm gonna be recovering from a C-section at the same time that the baby's here. And I don't want him to associate us sitting on the bed instead of playing on the floor with the baby got here and now we are. Um, I'm gonna explain to him that mommy has a big boo-boo, let him see and you know, he knows what that is. And that I have to, you know, do these things, sorry, the baby's flipping around, do these things to heal and to recover but just wanting him to get used to that now and also myself to get used to it now because I'm used to doing all the things I've been around nothing but little boys for a very long time well primarily not nothing but but primarily so I'm used to being on the floor and doing all the playing and the carrying and the lifting and the riding on my back and all that so just wanting him to get used to a little more mellow play that mommy can't always pick you up that kind of thing and along those lines, I did ask on social media what people were doing or had done to prepare them, their toddler or their little people for a new baby. And I got the most amazing suggestion that we're gonna implement sometime this week. Um, but I thought it was brilliant, which was to, because some people will say get a doll for your child to experience, to interact with, to play with, and that kind of thing to get used to having a baby room. Her suggestion was to get a doll for me. And the thought behind it, and she did this for her two children, her subsequent to her second and her third, was to get the your other children, child or children, used to you being occupied. Now I'm holding the baby. I'm feeding the baby, help getting the your other children or child to help you get bottles for the baby, get a diaper for the baby to interact. So to learn that whole introduction of this helpless little person that mommy has all the time. And I, again, I think that is brilliant. And it's what she said was it helped the kids be angry at the doll would not get angry at the baby when the baby got here because they were already used to it because they because they got used to having the doll around again it is not my idea i take zero credit for it but i think it is brilliant i ordered a doll like immediately so i think that's pretty much all the things that we're doing for our toddler to prepare him for the baby just a quick note on our teenager so jeremiah was 13 when Brixton was born and we did our best to prepare him and to remind him that his you know place in our hearts in the home it wasn't changing that we loved him dearly but we didn't prepare him for how full our hands were actually gonna be when the baby got here and I think that's mostly because we didn't fully grasp how full our hands were gonna be when the baby got here so that transition was not smooth. Things came around. It took several months for them to really bond and to interact as siblings. It it took a while. 
I think we're still recovering a bit. His side of feeling like a priority or like we're too busy to do X, Y, and Z. And part of that I talked about in my why I'm excited and nervous about having another baby video. A lot of that was that in the hours where we're, you know, typically home as a family. So like evening, Saturday, that kind of thing. Um, my husband's previous job kept him at work. And thankfully that has changed since. So he actually is now home with us in the evenings and on weekends. So we've already seen a shift in what we're able to do. There's only so much that I personally could do as I was adjusting to having a little one for the first time and still being able to try to meet his schedule needs. And I don't think it's completely and totally worked out. I think we're still gonna have challenges as those gaps in their needs are so different in the age groups of like our oldest and our, two, our soon to be two youngest. But I think we are already starting to make some adjustments in that area. But we talked to him honestly about it and about what we need from a pre-planning perspective in order to be able to make it work and about like if I hesitate and I don't say yes right now like this is all the things that I have to take into consideration when we're trying to figure out how to do this it's like I said it's a lot easier now that there are two of us to split the responsibility and then Jeremiah will be driving later in the year himself so a lot of that will be alleviated as well but it is a concern it's and something that we're monitoring this time around, hopefully a lot closer because we've been there already and done that. Not making him feel like he's less than or that he's no longer our kid because there are children that are smaller and needier than him. Just saying like, okay, we this is what I need you to do because you can, but <laughs> because for his own development. And so we've been working on that, like taking more responsibility around the house, just because like even before he knew there was a baby coming, I try not to tie it to the baby, but like you need to do more. <laughs> you need to do more for yourself. You need to be more responsible and more self-sufficient. And that's just a thing, but not tying it to because I need to do X, Y, Z. No, you just need to do that because you're almost 16 years old. You'll be <laughs> like, you'll be out in the world if you choose to in a couple of years and you need to be ready to go out there. So those are all the things that we're doing for our tiny people. Please tell me what are some things that you did when you were preparing to introduce a new child to the family, whether it was your second or your seventh. I would love, love, love to hear what worked for you. I am all about the advice of those who have gone before me. So anything that you think I could add to what we're doing for Brixton or even what we're doing for Jeremiah to help them to prepare for the challenging season that is the newborn period and the infant year <laughs> that just drastically shifts the dynamics of the household. But yeah, anything that we can do additionally in addition to what I've said here, love to hear about that in the comments. Well, anything that worked for you or especially those things that didn't because I don't like to waste time. So thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a, a thumbs up so other mamas can find it. And also consider subscribing if you would like to talk more about pregnancy, parenting, just mom life in general. Please consider subscribing. I would just love to spend some more time with you. I will see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.